All right, we're with Tom George today. Uh, great to see you, Tom. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, Ryan. Always great to uh, talk with you and, uh, and and get to spend some time. Yeah, so I'm excited about what we get to talk about today. So um, we're going to cover your history, your background going into the camp at Little Rock. Um, and you work with so many kids. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to learn a lot from you today, talking <laughs> quarterback philosophy with you a little bit. So before we get into all that, um, for those out there that may not be familiar with you, tell us, if you will, a little bit about your background and how you got into football, your love for football. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, you know, I'm I'm the owner of QB Impact and uh, based out of Oklahoma City. And you know, I'm uh, I'm blessed to have uh, some regional guys in Arkansas and Texas and Hawaii, um, and and a guy down in Louisiana. And you know, I I've retired military. 25 years in the military and I kind of when I was in Jacksonville Florida I was blessed um, I was still in the military and I got to coach high school ball at Clay High School and one thing about Clay High School is it's it's Florida it's loaded with talent um, coaching staff was probably the best I've ever been around in my life and uh, we went to a 5A state title in uh, um, when, I, when I was there my my oldest son was a senior and one thing I learned was we had a lot of recruitable kids. So I built relationships with Steve Spurrier and a lot of SEC guys. And at the time, Urban Meyer was at Florida. So I built relationships over time. Um, and I worked at University of Florida camp. And, you know, I, I got around guys and I got to learn the game better. Um, and then over time, you know, I left, I left Florida and I moved to Oklahoma. Or well, when I came to Oklahoma, I actually took a job in the military and when I got here, uh, I was fortunate. My youngest son was a quarterback. He was a sophomore at the time. And uh, we moved him to Jones High School. Um, again, surrounded by phenomenal coaches and, and kids. And, uh, you know, I, again, I was blessed. Uh, their head coach hired me uh, on board to coach quarterbacks. And, you know, we went to one of three A state title in, in, in Jones, Oklahoma. And, my son, Brandon, was the uh, Gatorade Player of the Year. So, you know, I've been blessed to have two boys, to coach two boys to state title games and be a part of their lives and, and be surrounded by coaches of high character um, at both Clay High and Jones. And, you know, I've learned from them. Um, and I, I spent this, some time with Joe Dickinson on the DeBar Barlow Sports staff, and I was able to to get to know him and, and learn the quarterback position. And he was a consultant with the Buffalo Bills. So I was able to, to learn a lot of things from him, to be honest with you. I'd say most of my QB knowledge came from learning from great coaches, you know, and, uh, and over time it's, it's made me better, but, you know, I, I, I've always, I built QB impact because I wanted to instill more than just football in the guys that I work with and the athletes and families I'm around. It's kind of my mantra and it's always been, you know, it's bigger than football. Um, you know, I think as coaches, we got to do more. Um, so, you know, I believe in talking to my athletes about humanity, right? About being, being a better human being, about, about working hard. You know, we're in this young entitlement mode. I want kids to understand that effort counts. They got to work hard. They got to do more. They can't just have it given to them that they should respect their parents, that they should clean their room. They should open the door for their mom, kind of go back to where we were. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, using that as your platform to be a better student in school and lean on academics and then use your athletic ability as kind of the last thing. You know, I want you to, if you're going to train with me, you're going to be a good kid or I'm not going to train you. And I hate to say that, but that's the honest truth. Um, and so, you know, I've, I've always kind of, I've always kind of used my military background um, to be, you know, to kind of give me the values and qualities I have as a coach, if that makes sense. I probably went too long, didn't I? I apologize. No, no, no. I like it. Um, yeah, no, there's some back to basics and, uh, you know, uh, a couple of dollars not worth a headache with a, a, a kid that's not respectful or not wanting to work hard. So uh, <laughs> I get all that yeah. coaching standpoint. And not only that, but it's going to help them further in life, not just uh, the collegiate aspect, um, if they are able to make it, um, but just as a working adult. So um, so you touched on so much stuff, um, kind of backtrack and, and maybe touch on a couple of things with you, with all the coaches, sounds like you've not only 
you know, got to rub elbows with some of the best all-time Spurrier, Urban Meyer. <laughs> you know, you're talking about all these, you know, all-time greats. Um, so what is your philosophy as a quarterback coach? Um, is there is there one that you've gravitated towards? Um, you know, I, I would say I, I try to give my guys at my camps and the guys that I train a term that I, uh, you know, a lot of people use it maybe differently than me, but for me, the term is mental calmness. Um, and it doesn't matter who you like in the NFL or who wants to have the goat argument, but if you notice the guys that are great are, are really calm. They don't panic. They don't freak out. They're in the pocket. They, they move well. They're very calm. Their elbows are calm. You know, they, they don't freak out and just, you know, so I, I think what, I think mental calmness comes from confidence and, and knowing that and being confident in what you're doing, right? Um, and I've always believed that it starts from the ground up. You know, I watched a special on Aaron Rodgers when he talked about if you don't, if you don't know where your feet at, your upper body will never follow. So I believe in, in, in getting their feet right, getting their base right, understanding their stance and why I believe in having a staggered stance. And once they get their feet right in molding them up to the top. Now here's the deal, right? Not, not everybody has a perfect motion or mechanics and some guys can spin it without having the great mechanics. And sometimes you just got to let them throw. So at the end of the day, you know, I, I think every kid's different. Um, but through all that, I believe in mindset. I believe in being a good teammate. I believe in being a good leader. I believe in having high character. I don't care how good you are. If you don't treat people right, then you got a lot to work on. So, you know, those are kind of my philosophies. Um, kind of the baby steps process in growing the QB. Um, I mean, Tom Brady has a quarterback coach outside of the team he plays on. It's a skill set that's perishable. You have to do it. Um, so, you know, those, those are some of the things I believe in. It's not perfect. It, you know, make no mistake about it. I'm not a QB guru by no means. Uh, you know, I'm a guy that learns. Um, I'm not the best, but I work, my, I work hard to make sure these kids get what they need. Um, I'm not a, you know, there's, I'm not a biomechanics genius. I am not, I'm not that smart. Okay. But I know the game uh, and I can teach kids how to play the game. I think you're being humble. I'm sure you are. All right. Um, so uh, I appreciate you telling me a little bit about that. So, so the, the, the headquarters for QB impact is in Oklahoma. That's where your facility is, correct? Yes, sir. Where all are you pulling Guys, like who, who are you working with? I mean, I know you mentioned several different areas where you have, uh, you know, other coaches and you go in and you help there, but uh, day in and day out, uh, where's your facility and, and which kids are you pulling in um, to, to train at your facility? Yeah, you know, I, I'm blessed. I kind of double dip, right? I'm the president of a uh, facility called the Oklahoma Athletic Center and, and which QB Impact is, is homed out of. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we get a lot of kids that come in from down south from, and I say down south, meaning from the Dallas area, and we have a lot of guys that come in from the Tulsa area. Uh, but typically during the week, of course, m most of my guys are here in Oklahoma City. Then on the weekends, I do a large, large group on the weekends, and I train college guys early on Sunday afternoon, and then I bring in a large contingent of high school and younger guys. Um, you know, so I got a lot of guys in the area. I'm blessed because, you know, I'm able, because I have satellite academies in, in, in Texas and Hawaii and Arkansas and, and, and Louisiana and some cool places. I'm blessed because I get kids that regionally come in every once in a while from those areas. And I'm able to spend some time with them, with my regional coaches. And, uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of dudes that, you know, that can play my, my 2023 and 2025 class and I think that's a nationwide thing is super talented um and and, and like I said I, I think that's a nationwide thing but I think those two classes are going to be special very cool uh that'd be interesting uh, uh I've not I've not broken that down but I, I yeah. I'd have to agree with you you know going just quick off the top of my head uh how the classes are breaking down with the talent the, the arm talent um so when you work with different QB, so are you working with, you know, pro style? Are you working with spread shotgun? Are you full service? Is there a specialty, uh, how you go about training guys? 
Yeah, you know, I, I kind of put together a plan weekly and I build it into like a three month spreadsheet. So it's kind of a quarterly buildup. And, uh, and that way, and then I track the kids when they come to training. That way I can tell if a kid misses a session and what he needs. But I, I mean, I believe in any, everything. I, I literally just spent an hour and a half, two sessions ago on under center, taking an under center snap and getting their body in and lower half right. You know, and I posted it and a lot of guys were, well, we don't do that anymore. We don't do this. Well, you, you might not do that anymore, but the college he goes to might. So, you know, I believe in teaching them um, the qualities it takes to play anywhere at any school. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of the, you know, Alabama is going to get under center and they're going to get in the gun. So, the, the, you know, those guys are going to do that. So I want them to make sure they're productive in all those situations. So I wouldn't, I mean, the game is an RPO game now where everybody's got to move a little bit, but by all means, you know, these guys got to be able to take a five or seven step drop and hitch and, and throw a dime. So I believe in teaching them the ability to move and, and find receivers. I, I also believe in teaching them to, to get into the pocket and slide and, and move a little bit. So, um, you know, I try to say we teach all facets of the game, um, um, you know, and, and, and we structure it that way so that kids are complete quarterbacks, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, with the coaches that kind of push back against you doing that, I would have just been like, well, what if you want to do a QB sneak, you know, at the goal line and have, have your quarterback under center or, you know, do a three-step drop, uh, you know, on a short yardage play and, get the, the linebackers back, you know, where they're baiting on the throw. Um, and then, you know, again, the, the quarterback's going to have some room to run. There'd be a lot of pushback on me if somebody said that. You're like, well, the small mind in this anyway. Yeah, I, it, yeah, I, I uh, the term pushback is very simple to me. It's in the dictionary called noise. And I, <laughs> I, I typically, it's, right, it's right, just right. noise to me. It's all right. Well, it's got to be Here's the thing. here's the thing, right? When you and I say this with the utmost humility, but when you when you've done twelve deployments to the Middle East, noise doesn't really bother you from another coach. And I hope that doesn't come out too arrogant. <laughs> no, no, I get you. Well said. Well said. Water off the the duck's back, right? So I got you. Um, and then so. You put on fantastic camps um, every year. There's the big one that's down in Dallas, AT&T Stadium. That's Cowboy Stadium, which is, I mean, I'm sure the kids just the first hour or two that their jaws on the ground. <laughs> and they get out, what a cool experience um, to, to be on an NFL uh, field, getting to, uh, getting to perform and compete. Um, so you are a veteran running QB camp. So when you go into um, the camp at War Memorial Stadium on April 24th, taking that philosophy that you have that you've developed over the years with the camps, what's important to you to instill, even if it's a kid that you work with all the time, or it's a new kid, kind of how do you go about working with quarterbacks at camps? You know, I, I think for me, it's the mindset of teaching them to be able to fix or self-reflect when I'm not there, right? At the end of the day, it's a business, I get it. But I want young people to be able to go to practice. And if they throw the ball in the dirt, they can reflect back to camp and say, what did coach say at camp that I can self, I can fix it myself at practice, right? Or what did he teach me so that if I make a mistake in a game, I can go back to War Memorial and say, hey, that one weekend, we had that combine or camp coach George talked about if I miss to the left, maybe my shoulders aren't turned or my hips aren't right or my base isn't right. So maybe I got to take a look at that, you know, or if I'm high or if I'm getting a pass rush, I need to slide. So my point is my goal at any camp, it doesn't matter if it's mine or yours or a guest coach at any camp. It's to take the information I provide to these young people and hopefully they can take it back to their school. Um, and not only can they use it um, to improve themselves, but maybe the JV quarterback can learn from them because they learned from us at the camp, you know, so it, it's giving knowledge and, and them carrying it on, if that makes sense. Right. Um, so one of my favorite parts, scouting, is just watching the kids compete, right? Um, getting after it and, and that sort of thing. Um, so when that portion of the camp comes around with you after you've 
instilled some some different drills and the basics start doing one-on-ones how do you go about that what are some of the things that you try to how do you test the kids what do you want to see from the kids when they get into the one-on-ones after you've worked with them on specific drills yeah i mean to me one-on-ones is about competing um that's i mean you get to see who who's not afraid to compete right because a lot of guys a lot of guys can do drills really good but when bullets start coming it's a whole different kid right and it's the same way at every level you see that in the nfl right so you know what i like to see in one-on-ones is leadership and competition okay so if you make a bad throw is your head down are you pouting are you you know are you what's your body language if you make a good throw um um are you are you uh, are you selfish? Is it all about you? Or are you praising the receiver for making the catch? Um, you know, I, I think I look at the mindset of it and all those things and the leadership qualities in a QB while he's competing. When he makes a bad throw, is it is it my bad to the receiver or is it oh the receiver's it's his fault? You know what I mean? So I like quarterbacks to have a little humility but be dogs at the same time, but at the end of the day, be a good teammate. So I think. Um, you know, that competition side of it, I, I, I will tell you, I, I've been to camps and combines where they get into one-on-ones and kids kind of stand around and throw the ball. I expect every QB to take a, a three-step drop or a five-step drop or a quick game throw and do it the right way. I'm not, I'm not about we're just not going to stand here and throw the ball around and play catch. We're going to do it the right way. So, um, you know, those are the things I look forward to. And, and obviously, at the end of the day, have fun and compete. You know what I mean? I have a lot of energy, so I, I, I get pretty fired up in situations like that. You'll, trust me, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited. You, you got me fired up. I'm excited for it. So for um, all the viewers, uh, and we'll have links with it um, back to, but just if you will, tell everybody where they can find you, um, your website, uh, Twitter, if you're on Instagram. Yeah, um, um, my website is uh, qbimpact.com. I'm on uh, Instagram and, and, and Twitter um, at qbimpact, or um, my Twitter for me is at Coach George Five. And um, you know, I put a lot of content out there, and uh, you know, I'm I'm humbled and uh, and blessed that Ryan reached out to me about about working the camp in Combine um, at Little Rock at War Memorial. So you know. Take a look, check us out on Twitter and, and, and get signed up for that camp. I think it's gonna be a blast. Uh, one thing I've learned over time is I try to surround me with great people and I know, and Ryan didn't pay me to do this, trust me, but <laughs> Ryan Wright's a great human being. That means more than anything else. So come see us in uh, at War Memorial. Very kind of you, Tom. I'm pumped. I wish I was, you know, uh, 30, 40 years younger <laughs> so I can go out and get some <laughs> learn from you. Uh, yeah, I don't want to do the math on how young I need to be. But anyway, uh, Tom, I appreciate your time today. As always, I'm excited to see you in action. I'm excited to see the kids in the area uh, learn more about their game, scout them, and see how well they take uh, coaching and instruction. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Uh, again, I appreciate your time, Tom. And uh, I'll be seeing you Saturday, April 24th at Memorial Stadium, my man. Perfect, perfect. Appreciate you, brother, and uh, appreciate you.